Okay. Hey, good morning. Um, so, uh, another video. Uh, I'm on a roll. I've actually done two videos in less than a week. Um, I'll get better, especially if people actually start watching them and commenting, and I'm actually helping people. Um, it's funny, like, I don't really... I mean, I guess it kind of goes hand in hand. I could care less. Like, if it got, like, two views, and then people actually, like, two people commented and said, hey, it actually helped them, I would actually be more happy about that than, like, multiple views that nobody comments on, right? Um, I, I enjoy helping people, so if, if it helps you, please, um, you know, of course, subscribe and like the video, cool, whatever. Um, leave a comment. That's my biggest thing, right? Leave a comment, let me know that you actually got something out of this. If I know that you got something out of this, um, that's beneficial to me. And uh, like I said, it's more useful than, like, even if you don't like or subscribe, leave a comment if it helped you. <laughs> That way I know it helped you. Um, and then I'll make more videos. Um, so either way, we're gonna do something a little different. Um, I am going to actually, uh, this is gonna be a programming tutorial series, but it's gonna be on two languages at once. Um, the reason for this is uh, strictly because I kind of wanna use this as an experiment, but uh, no. Um, in, Spoken languages, right? When you learn, you essentially map things. Like if I'm learning, if I know English and I know, you know, English very well, and I'm going to learn Spanish, then I'm going to map things in Spanish to English, and I'm going to then, you know, build that foundation off of my foundation in English. Um, so, in programming, you can't really do that, right? Because programming is, uh, it, it doesn't have some like it's like you would be learning a language for the first time, right? And when you learn a language for the first time, um, as a child, you know, um, you essentially use multiple senses. You use, like, all of these other things that you don't really have available for you, right? Like, like I can point to a cup as a, and I can say cup. And my kid now will understand that, like, he will map the word cup to a physical representation of cup. Um, it's very hard to do that in programming because if you've never programmed before, then you don't have anything to map it to. So I want to see if mapping, just seeing it in two different ways two different structural ways, different programming languages ways, help cement an idea that um, helps you guys understand it better, right? Because there might be something I do in one language and you might not get it, but because you see me doing it in a different language right next to it, that you'd be able to map those to each other and it would essentially help cement the idea better in your mind. Um, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, that or it's just going to be extremely you know, complex and you guys won't understand it, but um, it's going to be a very simple tutorial. So if you've ever seen any sort of programming, it should be fairly easy. Not only that, it helps you get um, um, access to both languages at the same time, uh, which if you are interested in doing programming for a job or you know, you're doing it even for a hobby, you'll be writing in different languages, right? It, it's very rare to see like, yeah, there's one language that somebody prefers, but not necessarily both languages. So I'm gonna try not to do a super long winded intro like this every time. Um, this is strictly just the background for the tutorial. Actually, I might even just make this a separate video, like, hey, this is an introduction and why I'm doing it in two separate languages. Um, if not, then we'll find out. So either way, we're going to use Go and Python. Uh, the reason I'm using Go and Python is because Go is a rather low level language, essentially, right? And when I say low level language, it's not like as low as C or anything like that. Um, but it does give you access to pointers and the way that you can transfer variables around. Uh, and then Python, which is, you know, uh, super like, hey, you want to get into programming, you should learn Python. I don't necessarily agree with that, but um, <laughs> that's just what's out there nowadays. Um, and that's what people say. Um, I actually think Go would be a better language for people to learn because when you start abstracting um, the details of how memory is managed, uh, it's hard to unlearn that and do it the other way. Unlike when you realize how memory is managed and then you build a layer on top of that that manages that for you, um, uh, then, you, I don't know, it's just easier, at least for me, to like, like if, if you know the ground, if you, if you have a good foundation, you, very, you can easily build up. Um, it's very hard when you start up and then you want to like start throwing blocks in underneath it to try to like make up for the knowledge. And I did that backwards, right? And that took me a long time to like, cause I do security, right? So I do, I, I do, um, I do security, how would you call it? Uh, I'm a systems engineer, but I'm more like a security systems engineer, which uh, essentially uh, vulnerabilities, things like that. Um, I go through a look at code, reverse engineering, which if you guys are interested in those videos, 
leave them in the comments as well. Um, like I said, like helping people, and if people want help, I would be more than willing to. Um, either way, so we're gonna do both languages. One's a little lower level, one's a little higher level. Both are memory managed technically, but one just gives you a little bit um, more uh, control of what you're doing with your variables and memory. So either way, we're gonna start out and we're gonna do this uh, very simple. Uh, we're gonna start out with comments because that's uh, the normal standard, right? Like commenting your code, useful. Um, I don't do it half as much as I should because I normally program my own projects and I look at my own code, but I do attempt to at least uh, write major comments and major sections of the program so that I know what I'm doing. But either way, uh, this is a comment, right? Um, actually, so Go is kind of weird. It's gonna lie at you if you don't have a boilerplate. So we're gonna, our package main, sorry, that's package, not module, package main, right? Okay, um, so word boilerplate, uh, quick definition. Boilerplate is things that, uh, code that you have to write in order for your code to run. And that's the easiest way I would put it. Uh, there, of course, there's a more technical term for it and all of that, but um, that that's the way I would put it. If you ever see boilerplate, boilerplate is essentially, hey, you have to write this code if you want your code to run the right way um, or helps configure your code to run in the way that you described. So um, in Python, we can do very similar things and we can do a hashtag or pound sign depending on how old you are and whether or not you're a millennial, um, which is funny because I think I'm actually maybe a millennial i don't know maybe i don't know either way i'm like either in millennial or right after that or something like that either way um what we're going to do is this is a comment as well right so as you can see these two things even the editor knows these two things are the same hence the the uh color of of it and um, the way it's acting it essentially this tells a compiler or a interpreter, depending on Python is an interpreted language, Go is a compiled language. Um, essentially, it tells the thing that's running your code, be it whatever interpreter or compiler, um, that, hey, this is a comment. Go ahead, ignore it. I don't care about it. Um, this is strictly for humans, not you. Um, so it normally just skips over. Even though with Go, that's you can put documentation and comments and things like that. It, it gets complicated on that, but we don't need to know that yet. So um, Go does have some boilerplate, back to that. Uh, you have to do package main, um, and then more than likely you will need a function of main. Um, this essentially just tells Go, because it's compiled language, hey, where does your code start and what should I run? Um, Unlike Python, which is interpreted, you hand it the file and the interpreter says, hey, he's handing me this file, I'm gonna read it as a file and it obviously is gonna start in the file that he reads me or the file that it gives me, uh, the person gives me. So either way, um, very simple, right? Um, these two things, uh, I actually don't know if Go, I think Go will actually run this now if it's just by itself, right? Yeah, and you're not gonna get anything bad because this is the most basic program in Go. And this is by far the most basic program in Python 3. Um, Python, oh, sorry. I wrote Python 3 and it should have been Python, yeah. Um, so either way, um, to get these things set up, I'm using Python 3, not Python 2. Uh, Python 2, you shouldn't be using, it's deprecated and uh, you shouldn't be learning it right now. Um, this goes into my thing that there's some people that live and die by Python 2 and like will never give up on it. And it's like, look, it's deprecated, get over it move to Python 3. I, there, there's definitely things in Python 2 that are a little uh, friendlier and better, but um, it's over. Get over it. Uh, it happened. Um, so download Python 3, right? And um, let me pull that up for you real quick, just in case. I, I always forget this part because I, I feel like if you're trying to learn programming that you would at least know how to get the programming language installed, but you'd be surprised. Um, and if you're a beginner, we're gonna show you what you needed to do to do that, right? So you're just gonna to go to Python. You, actually, you're not even gonna go to the website. Go to, I don't use Bing normally, but because I use Edge, um, it defaults to Bing. So um, whatever programming language you're gonna do, just say Python 3 download, right? That's it. You're gonna get taken to this nice little website here. Um, you can download the launcher right here, the Python. You're gonna follow it through like a normal install. Go ahead and do the defaults. If you have Visual Studio Code open, you need to close it, and then you need to reopen it. The reason being is that your path variables, you won't be able to run Python 3 like that unless you restart your editor. Um, because the way Windows deals with um, path variables, uh, it 
the program doesn't update automatically with them. You have to close it and then it will relaunch and the shell in the background will uh, pull up the new environmental variables. You can do like refresh EMV, but I still have issues with that as well. So I highly recommend just closing it down, reopening it. That's Python 3, um, go, lang, download, right? Just go up and type it, downloads, go. Um, most, both websites, I'm pretty sure, yeah, so it has it right here, right? Like a Microsoft Windows install or an Apple or a Linux, whatever you're on. Um, whatever you're on, uh, click the one, go through, follow it just like a normal install. Once again, if you're on Windows, close out a VS Code, reopen it, bam. You now have a, you should be able to run most of the stuff. Um, the other thing you're gonna wanna do though, is once you're in VS Code, we're back to VS Code now, you are gonna go to your extensions and you are going to look for either Go and then it'll come up and whatever the first one is normally is the right one, but you can essentially click on it. And if you know it has like millions of downloads, then it's probably the right one. Um, but this is the official Go team at Google, blah, blah, blah. And Go's tooling is, is top notch. Um, yeah, that is the one thing that Go has for it that like many languages don't. Go's, Go's tooling is top notch. Actually a little too top notch, a little annoying sometimes. We won't get into that. Um, so we have Go and then we have Python, right? And that's all, essentially all you're gonna do is you're gonna install then the Python. Um, well, I, apparently I don't have it installed. I guess it, I know Python's like what was my, my first language. So I rarely use um, a lot of tooling for it, but I'll go ahead and install it just so you can see. Um, it'll actually tell me, I'm pretty sure I need to restart the editor, possibly, could be wrong, um, we'll find out. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go ahead and install this. Um, while that's doing that, we'll just let it run in the background. Either way, you can come in here and, oh, it's done. Sweet, okay, so I guess I didn't have to restart. Either way, we're gonna close down, the only thing I have open, right, is a main.go and a main.py, that's the only files I have. Uh, so file manager doesn't really matter on this part. So, um, because I wanna set these up as similar as possible, there's things that I have to do uh, differently in each language, so that way you can follow along, and like I said, we can help cement the idea that, hey, these are two different languages, but these are the ways that you do the exact same things, or as close as you can get to the top two things, or the same two things, um, and yeah. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and don't worry, we'll get into the functions, we'll get into all of that. Um, as of right now, I'm just, I wanna show you that these two things um, are the same. Um, so because Python, like I can normally just do this, right? I can do pass. And then in Python, it's funny. In Go, you have to write boilerplate to um, essentially get your program to run. In Python, you don't have to write boilerplate, but if you want to use the similar structure to this, then you have to write boilerplate, uh, which is weird as that sounds. But right, uh, in, in Python, it's uh, normally known as if, name equals equals main then we run main um, essentially this will give you the two same things um, like i said let's make sure that go runs go so in in go uh, you just do go run and then we're not using the package manager a lot or anything like that so you just go run give it where your file is um, and run it and that will run your program for you uh, python same thing python and we are just going to do main.py, right? Both of them, no errors, nothing, because these are essentially the exact same program as of right now. Um, so first thing we're gonna do, right, is we're gonna talk about a variable. Um, thing about a variable is essentially, when you do data, when Python is, or programming, watch my meta programming thing, and I kind of go into this towards the end of the video, is that it's all data, right? Like it's essentially, People think that you're giving instructions to a computer, all of this stuff. Yes, you technically are doing that, but essentially programming is creating data, modifying data, checking data, manipulating data, and that's it. Like that's essentially what you're doing, um, right? Yes, you're giving the computer instructions, but essentially a program and what makes programming is that you're, you are doing things with data, um, right? things that don't normally happen with data or things that don't have a um, program that already manipulates the data that you want. So we are going to start off with a very basic. We're gonna say my name is equal to Sam, right? And in Go, we are going to do name 
and we're gonna set that equal to Sam, right? So um, you'll see over here that we get this little squiggly. Uh, Go, once again, like I said, its tooling is great and it's a little, you can go a little bit on the, the extreme side sometimes. And it's like, hey, look, uh, you made this and you're not using it, so why did you make it, right? Essentially, it's a valid question, right? If I'm making data and I'm putting it in my program, why am I not using it? Um, so uh, to to sat to satisfy uh, the Go language checker, we will go ahead and import uh, the format uh, or the format. Well, I call it format because um, I'm pretty sure that's what they consider. That's what they call it on the Go lang when you do through their their stuff. Um, and we're just going to do a print line, and we are going to print our name. Right, and you'll notice like it, this is the go, go tooling being cool. Right, is I uh, you see this right here that's red squiggly, but that's because I haven't hit save yet. Once you hit save, you'll see that it automatically imported this Fumat library, right? This format, uh, however you want to call it. Uh, I call it we're calling it Fumat. That's how I'm calling it. Call it format if you want. I don't care. Um, Fumat is getting imported, right? And uh, I'm calling a function that somebody else wrote on this variable and essentially all it's going to do is just in my terminal down here I'm just going to print um, it's just going to print my name right so right now if I run uh, go run it just prints my name right because that's all I'm doing I've created data and now I'm saying what I want to do with that data I'm saying I want it to be printed to the console and it is printing it out there um, now in Python you'll see I can do this right and I didn't even use it and I can run Python and it doesn't yell at me because Python, if I create a very, if I create data and I don't use it, it's like, okay, cool, whatever. He just didn't want to use it. Um, has its strengths and weaknesses. Um, either way, uh, the way we get around that, right, is we just call print on name. And now we have Sam. So go run Sam, Python run Sam, the same program in both ones, right? And you can see, once again, that, um, Actually, I'm gonna put this up at the top just so we kind of, so we fit um, this Go. I'm surprised the Go language checker doesn't kill me right here and be like, hey, you're supposed to have package main, the first thing, anything inside, yeah. Um, either way, so this is a comment, this is a comment. Um, this is our import. Uh, I don't have an import here because though the print is a library, um, a library function, it is the Python standard library and Python standard library knows that, hey, if I'm writing print, then I am going to want to use the standard library, Python standard library print. Um, essentially, I could override it, override this, I'm pretty sure, and it will take the most local one. So if I have a function called print in here, it will actually run my print in here first. Um, I'd say we could test it, but I'd rather not throw you guys off track um, that much right now. So either way, variable, right? Um, create another variable, 30. Um, I'm not 30, I'm 32, sorry. Apparently I wanted to make myself younger. Um, 32, uh, right? Once again, same thing. Um, age equals 32. The only difference is this is a string, this is a number. Um, and over here in Go, string, number, um, once again, yelling at me, saying, hey, you created 32 and you said it was an age and you don't care about it apparently because you didn't use it. Um, get rid of it or um, I'm gonna yell at you. And you'll even see that when you come down here and you try to uh, run it down here. I actually think, yeah, yeah, so see, yeah. Age declared but not used. Um, and, and it tells you, it tells you, hey, this is on um, eight, line eight, um, and I don't know where it's getting the two from. I'm guessing uh, if you count the tabs maybe, it's like the second tab, I don't know. Um, Either way, it tells you the line, which is nice. And it even says, hey, age was declared but not used. Nice, being nice to me. So what we can do is we can do that. Um, essentially, I'm pretty sure we could do this as well. Yeah, let's just do that. And this will print it on the same. But you'll notice if I do this um, and I run it in Go, yeah, um, it's nice enough to uh, put a, like it, it doesn't just, Push, it doesn't just concat them together, right? It doesn't make it one string. It knows it's two separate strings, so it's going to put a space in between it for you. Um, over here, name, age. I do that. And Python, I'm pretty sure, does the same. Yeah, Sam32, right? Once again, exact same thing. We're, we're moving on, right? <laughs> These two programs are exactly the same thing. Um, 
which one do you think is nicer, right? Like, like Go actually isn't bad. The, really, the difference in Go is like because I'm creating, um, I want the compiler to um, auto check this type for me and everything. And this is my instantiation. This is the first time I'm using the variable. I do this, right? But if, and actually, that'll be the next thing we do. I am now going to set name equal to Jim. I don't know who Jim is, but we're going to call it Jim. Um, so now our name is going to be Jim. And we're just going to copy that line and paste it down below. Right. And we're reassigning. So essentially, we're saying, hey, the first time you create something in, um, in, in Go, right, this colon equals is the nice way of saying, hey, this is the first time I'm, I'm declining, I'm declaring this. Um, now I'm going to set name from Sam equal to Jim. Um, and if I print this again, you will see that when I run it, it'll print it the first time with Sam. And now when I print name again, it is now Jim. Um, over here, we're going to do name equals, or I need to do this after the print, or it will just update and just print Jim the entire time. Um, so we're going to do name equals Jim. And we'll copy that line and paste it down. So now when we run Python, Sam, Jim, right? Same thing, same. Um, line for line, essentially the exact same program. Um, once again, uh, the difference is I don't have to essentially tell um, Python that I'm using a library or what library. It knows that it's a standard library. In Go, you have to say, hey, I am using the Fumat library, um, which is part of the standard library in Go, and I am running the print line on it. So you have a little extra code. Um, this in, in Python could essentially just be Right, it could like this same thing if I just did this up here, right? Like, um, right, if I just did this up here, you'll see that when I run it in Python, I get the exact same thing, right? Because I don't need this extra boilerplate, I could essentially just write this and do that. But for the sake of the tutorial, that's not what we're doing. So, um, just remember that this, this def may, I keep pointing to the screen as if you can see it and I can't see my finger pointing to the screen apparently. Um, so as you can see, death main, this unneeded, but I highly recommend using this. I always highly recommend using this in Python because it essentially will, without a doubt, if someone else reads your code, they know, hey, this is where his program is starting, right? Um, and that, that's the cool part about like, these other languages, they make you do this extra stuff, but there's normally a reason behind it because if someone else is reading your code, they they need to not jump around and be like, well, where's the actual code starting here? Python tells you exactly where it's starting. Um, so these are variables. Um, we'll go ahead and because I want to show you what's going on under the covers in Go language, um, we're going to redeclare this this name variable, right? And it's funny because if you actually have the, the tooling, like I said, it's really going to go it'll actually tell you exactly what this is saying. It's saying var not name equals string, right? or var name is a string, and then we're equaling it to Sam. This is essentially just a shortcut for that, right? These things right here. So um, I hope you guys can see that. I just looked at it, but I'm guessing that's just because it's small on my screen, but I'm fairly certain you'll be able to read that. If not, then maybe I'll zoom in or something after. Um, either way, we're gonna do var name string, right? This right here is still valid code. Um, right, right, yeah, still valid code. Essentially, this little colon, what it's doing is it's it's pushing this all together and it's saying, hey, compiler, I need you to check and see what this guy is actually setting to this, right? Like, what is he actually said? Oh, it's a string, okay, um, I know that name equals string. So, Go does a lot of things for you underneath because it ended because I said like I said before it's lower level it's doing these things for you just to make it a little nicer so that you have a little bit extra um, usefulness um, so either way um, now we're gonna get into something that's a little weird about um, Python and go and this is where they kind of can diverge when it comes to variables and things like that uh, here I can do name equals 50 right 
and I can print this again. And now you'll see when I print the Python one, I will get 50 and 32. Hmm, that's weird. I had said this was a string before, right? And now it is a, now it is a int, um, an int integer number, however you want to call it right now. We're not going to get into the very basic, there's different types of ints, different all of that, but we're not going to get into that yet. Um, that'll be in coming tutorials. If I do the same thing in Go, you will see that it won't be too jazzed about this. Um, and it will actually tell you. So here you can see, right? Cannot use 50 type untyped int as type string in assignment. Long way of saying is, hey, you said this was a string up here when you did this, and it's not, so I'm not going to do it. Um, fix it. <laughs> right? Go being like, like I said, Go tooling is they, very good tooling, um, but it ain't happening. You're not going to compile this. So, um, and you can see the reason why, right, is this, this, because this looks so similar to Python, this is where people can get it. It's like, well, why not? I, you know, I can do this in Python and this is very similar. Well, because this essentially is not what you're writing. You are writing that. And now this makes more sense. You're saying name is a string, right? This variable name is a string and it's equal to Sam. This is not a string. This is a, this is a number. Um, if I do this, right, it'll actually let me do that, right? But the way it's represented in memory is, um, it is represented as a string still when I do this, right? So it's not a variable. So I couldn't do like, um, 50 plus, I couldn't do Jim plus Jim or, or sorry, name plus name. Um, right. If I do, so actually let's, let's see what happens if I try to do this. Um, I'm pretty sure it's. What you're going to get here is you're not going to get 100, right? You're going to get 50, 50. <laughs> yeah, see? So you're going to get 50, 50, not 100. And that is because it is a string and not an int. Unlike if I do age plus age, or sorry, I did an underscore for some reason, um, age plus age, right? Um, now I will get 64 because my age was 32 and I am adding it to itself. So now I will get 64 because it knows it's a number, um, not a string. So it, once again, that's just, uh, these are little things that Python will let you get away with because it essentially has a container which holds the data and it will automatically, the interpreter as it's going through knows, hey, oh, this data is now no longer a string. It is a number. I am going to treat it as a number. Um, unlike Go, which is um, statically compiled, which is a um, fancy way, like it needs to know what all the variables are before it compiles it. So that way that you don't run into errors and you don't shoot yourself in the foot. Um, so either way, uh, I digress. I will go into, we're gonna change this back into name equals Sam and Sam. And we are going to get rid of this last one here. Um, we are going to get rid of that there because we are keeping these the same. Okay, so we're back to the same. So once again, you see these like little things and once again, this is just variables. Um, let's make these variables useful, right? Right now, they're not doing much, right? They're, they're printing them out. Ooh, nice. Um, let's do something with this data. And this goes down into, like, like I said, I wanted to program, um, I wanted to do tutorials that do things differently. Um, I don't think that our education system teaches people the best way of thinking about things, or they only teach people one way of thinking about things and not like letting you think outside the box and maybe like I get things different than most people get things. Uh, it just has to do with the type of person I am. So um, let's modify this. Well, not modify this data, but let's do something based on the data that gets passed. And to do that, we have a function. Okay, so in Python, this is a function de declaration. It means def is short for define function, I believe, or define, yeah, method, define function, um, define. And um, we're gonna say, say hello, right? And 
print hello right you might don't worry we're gonna push this along and you'll learn why we're doing this um, here we're gonna say say hello So Go did change this a while ago. You can actually just do, um, if you don't want to import the standard library, they actually changed this because I guess enough people complained about it, um, which still goes in the background and imports it for you. It's just to make it look nicer, right? And um, that's it, right? Uh, essentially, you can do this. The thing I've noticed, and it's funny because I don't see this in docs and I don't know if it's a bug or not. This is not the same print line function as this print line function. Um, Reason being is if you have a data structure or something like that and you want to print it out, it will only print the addresses of everything in that data and it will not actually print the data out for you unless you use FUMAT. You don't believe me, you should go try it. And like I said, I might get it out in a later video, but I, I don't know, I don't know. I, I have to look at when they changed this and if they said, hey, this is only gonna be for um, literal strings and not structures or whatever, but it, it works differently under the covers. So if you ever are attempting to print out like a data structure after we learn about data structures later on in the tutorial, um, you will, if you're running into issues and you're not getting the output you want, make sure you use the fumat.print line, right? Just make sure. Um, I actually, now I don't even use the regular print line anymore because yeah, okay, it's handy. I don't have to import uh, fumat up here. Um, but it gives you different um, out, output depending on the data you're passing into it. So be careful with that. Um, just a little side note if you ever get into. So now I'm just going to say hello, right? So we made this function that says, hey, say hello. It's going to print hello. You have the same thing over here. We're going to call it over here, right? Once again, same program, just a little different in the way that things are done, right? Function, def. But looking at this, I think it's quite easy to see that, right? Like this and this is the same thing. It's the same thing. Um, and you can pretty much see that. It's just the way that the language describes it. And this gets into like, which language is more eloquent. And um, uh, I love eloquent languages. I, I love like, I love programming, right? So I like writing in languages that I like or languages that I can read or that just make sense to me and do things the way I think about things. Not necessarily the right way, just the way I, I think about things and it matches up to that. Um, and this is what's hard is because I have yet to find like a, a language that is um, not in like alpha or beta and is actually like a good foundation language, been around for a long time that actually checks every one of my boxes. Um, but maybe one day I will. Um, but either way, you can see, right? And you can choose. This is why I'm making this tutorial as well, is which one do you like better? Which one do you think better? Do you like this, right? Uh, let me, now, let me show you that if I do this, right? Python freaks out and says, hey, I don't know what that is, right? Because that Python cares about your indentation, right? Unlike in Go, when I come over here and I do this, if when I hit save, goes like, okay, Brian, I know what you want. <laughs> I just hit save, right? And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, sweet. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and indent this because that's the way you should write it. Um, it, it like I said, like the Go tooling is, is, is very good when it comes to this. And for me, right, I actually do prefer braces over indents. Um, it just because it helps me say, hey, like this block, this, this code that I'm running right here belongs to this, right? Unlike in Python, Python says, hey, this, because of this indent, it belongs to this, right? All preference, not necessarily one's better or the other, just preference. Which one looks better to you? Like like I said, like me, I prefer seeing this one, but I know um, if you would have asked me this when I was first learning multiple languages, um, that I probably would have preferred this one just because I was used to it. Um, either way, so we move up and now we are going to run both of these. Sorry, I went off on a track, on a tangent. I'll try to make timestamps in the video so that way you guys can just be like, oh, he's talking again. I don't care. Um, but I, I do try to explain things because I want, once again, this is all about helping people. I don't really give a crap about um, the views or whatever. I just, I, I wanna help. If I can help like one person understand better, good. But as you can see, both times we run, we get the exact same output again. Hello, hello. 
Now, like I said, right now this is not useful. I'm just essentially, I could have just put this right here inside the main function and it would have done the exact same thing. But I can say, name and over here I can say, um, Oh, sorry. I actually believe this is opposite. In this is what happens when you do to a bunch of different languages. Um, now, you can see here, right, in Python. Um, I actually don't think this will still run me in Python. Yeah, see, it'll tell me, hey, you're missing a parameter, but it doesn't actually give me. Um, from what I see, it doesn't actually, it doesn't give you any um, thing that says that until you actually run it, right? It, it's not until you run it that's like, hey, you didn't give me anything. Unlike in Go, because the tooling, like I said, you'll, you'll hear me get on tooling because as you become progr a programmer and you program more and more, tooling is actually very useful and efficient. And um, it, it, ought, it, it says, hey, look, you're calling say hello. There's something wrong with this because say hello says that it's taking a string and you didn't give me a string. So um, to suffice this, we are going to say name. Um, and then now these are both the same again. Now we can, or actually, sorry, I have to put name over here, All right? And now I can run this. Hello, Jim. Hello, Jim, All right? So same program, once again. Um, the difference is because um, what I, going back to the way you declare variables and things like that, you have to tell the function, hey, what is it that you're going to give me? Like, are you going to give me an int? Or are you going to give me a string? What are you going to give me, right? So you say, hey, I'm going to give you a string, right? And this is what this means. I'm going to give you a string. This doesn't really matter that much, actually. Um, this is essentially just the string that gets passed in. So when I pass something in, what is it going to be called inside this function, right? So you're essentially just assigning it, right? You could kind of think of this as like, um, you could kind of refight, re rewrite this in like boilerplate. That's like, say hello, because this is what we saw equal, right? Um, actually, was whatever you passed. In, right? So essentially, this is what you're you're kind of seeing here. It's just this, hey, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a string, and you're going to assign it like we did up here to the variable name, right? And then inside here, because we're not in main anymore, same way we're not in here anymore, um, it's going to attach that value that was passed in into this name variable that's available, right? Because I could just do um, same name, right? I could do this, same name. Um, I don't have to call it name, right? I can call it whatever I want because inside here, I just have to make sure that when I use it in here, it is by this name. I could not use name as what we passed in because it wouldn't know. I'm not necessarily, and this goes into what's happening underneath the covers. I am not passing in the, um, the variable name. I am passing in the value of name, right? Um, and this goes into whether or not you're passing by reference or if you're passing by value. Uh, and it's a whole other thing when you get into, you've probably heard of like, if you're in security at all, you've heard like stacks and, and heaps and all of that and the way memory is dealt with in, in the back end. But just know right now, essentially, right, I could do this right and i could run this and when i run this and go i'm gonna get hello sam and that is because when i when you see name here i am not passing this name i am passing what name is equal to um and these are little things right that they don't i don't see a lot of people when they're teaching videos get into these little things but these are little things that make a difference in a language um because when you start getting bugs and you start getting errors and then you start doing what if you ever start getting into security and doing what i do you use this against people right you use this against people who write these things and they don't think about these little things that are happening underneath the covers 
and you exploit them. And when you exploit them, you get bugs, and when you get bugs, you get... Um, and when I say bugs, bugs is... You guys normally think bugs, oh, it's not working the way I, I wanted, or it's doing something bad, right, necessarily, or bad for... bad. <laughs> it's always necessarily going to do something bad, um, but it's good for me as a security researcher, right? Like, as a security researcher, when I see somebody doing things and they don't think things through, I love it because that means that um, it's exploitable and I can essentially um, change the way the program might be running based on that. So either way, um, let's go ahead and like I said, let's update this so that these are exactly the same so you know exactly what we're doing. Same name, same name. Um, Hello, hello, Jim. Hello, Sam. Oh, yeah. Let me run go again just to make sure we should get hello, Jim again. Yeah. Okay. So hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. Um, once again, exact same. But now this goes into the second part of, like I said, like people um, teach programming differently. But um, this is goes into um, using your data, right? So you created data and now you're using your data um, in a way that uh, it wasn't necessarily... It was bolted on after the fact, right? Like I created this data, right? And then now I am using that data to do something different, even though it's something stupid, right? It's just like, oh, now I'm saying hello to this data. Um, but that's all programs are and that's all they're built on. Um, so let's go in and do a little bit further uh, on this. Um, I'm gonna show you some little things that are a little easier, at least the way I read things, um, that I that I enjoy a little better. Uh, in Python, they recently Python Python three, I want to say eight ish or something like that. I I don't know exactly. They came out with what is considered a string interpolation format string, whatever, however you want to call it nowadays. Um, but essentially, instead of doing that, right, you can pass this f and then a string. And the F will is stand I, stands for format. I'm fairly certain. Um, don't quote me on it. Um, but essentially, I can do this, right? And this reads a little better. This reads a little better. It's like I'm doing the exact same thing. I didn't change. Like if I run this right now, right? If I run this right now, I get the exact same thing. It's not going to get anything different. It's just I believe this reads a little better because you're saying, hey, look, everything that's in the string, and then I'm going to take the same name and I'm going to place it inside that string. Um, so that when I'm reading this and I read through this code fast, it, it, this just, it makes more sense to me. Might not for someone who's been programming for a long time because they're so used to seeing, you know, um, same name like that or whatever um, without the one inside there. Either way, um, Go has something similar to this. Um, and the way that we would do this, and actually, you know what, let me copy this here. Sorry. Um, we're going to leave that one there. And we're gonna, uh, I'm just gonna paste it. So we're gonna get double output on this. Um, but I'm, it's just to show you the different ways of doing this and in, in Go. And this will become useful. This is why I'm showing you it in Go. In Python, not necessarily, but in Go it becomes useful because you're probably going to use this um, F prints, F print line um, uh, more. Um, actually, what you're gonna use is you're probably gonna use print line. Yeah, um, S print line, um, right? And here I'm gonna say hello space percent S, same name. Um, oh yeah, because this returns a string, Ugh, so I'm gonna have to wrap that. Um, actually, so F print, F. Sorry, as you're seeing, this is what happens when you start doing. Um, yeah, but then I have to pass it a UF print line using the formats. Yeah, so this is what I'm gonna do. Um, we're gonna do S print line, and then we're just gonna call FMT dot print line. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you this in a later video. Um, just as of right now, um, just know that what this is doing is a. Uh, This print, yeah, okay. Um, just, yeah, for now, just think, um, once again, we'll, we'll get into all of this, this will make more sense, but essentially, um, see this F here, hello, this is essentially doing the exact same thing as that. 
um, I'm saying, hey, I'm going to give you a string or I'm going to I want you to return to me a string that is formatted like this. It's going to say hello and then percent %s and then percent %s I'm going to give um, I'm going to assign it to same name. And the only reason you're going to do stuff like this is it's just easier than um, attempting to like if I let's say hello s how was your day? So if I wanted to do this equivalent up here, I would have to say, I believe this should give me the exact same output. Uh, minus, what did I change? Oh, um, oh, because it's putting a, so, and then that actually gives a valid thing is right. Like it, because everything I pass to print line in go is going to put a space after it. Um, you're going to get these weird things, right? Like I'm going to print Jim and then I'm going to print that. So how would I actually, you know, get hello, Jim, how was your day compared to, um, hello, Jim, comma, how was your day? Right. Um, and, and, and that's why like this, I'd actually, as of now, if you're just learning programming, I would recommend using this instead um, because if you're printing out to the console, a lot of times you're not just going to want to print that data necessarily out to the console. You're going to want to print it in a way that is useful to read or however it be. Um, so using this sprintf is very useful. Um, the same thing goes with this, right? Uh, if I do, I think I'd actually run into the exact same problem. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure if I do this, I will run into the exact same problem, possibly. Or I'm gonna have double hello there. I don't want double hello. And I'm going to copy and paste. Okay. So yeah, see, so that's go again. We, we know that. And C Python does the same thing. Very similar. Um, so this format string makes it different, makes it useful. There's different ways to do this in Python, including like the old way um, before we had that little F that you could put there, we would we would do this uh, in Python. Yeah, essentially this is just short for that, right? Um, uh, this is how you used to do this in Python. So, yeah, same, you get the exact same thing. Either way, um, I don't recommend using that way just because it's much easier to use this way for now. Uh, just, yeah, use this way if you can. So, we now have um, a way to use our data. Now we're going to work on how would I manipulate that data, right? And how do I change that data or how do I um, do whatever I need to that data, right? And this will call def um, age next year, right? Um, and we will take in an age and we will essentially just print, you will be, um, once again, we're gonna use this format string like we just learned about um, instead. And we will say age plus one next year. And then we will call age next year with our age. Once again, I could call this something different. I could call it, you know, um, next year age, but that necessarily wouldn't be useful for me right here because um, this, what's getting passed in is my actual current age. So you could actually say that, right? Um, current age, right? So that you could say then this reads a little better, current age plus one, right? So, hey, whatever you're gonna pass in is your current age for the age next year. And, and I'm gonna take your current age and I'm gonna add one to it, right? Like, like this reads, is close to English as you could probably get um, if you look at it, right? Like you will be current age plus one next year. It's a pretty simple English. Um, over here, we will write the same function age next year. 
and over here you will see that we were going to say current or we have to uh, oh yeah okay current age sorry so i write it there's a this is going to be just a small side note um i write there's a different programming language like i, I know a bunch of programming languages um too many to be useful for me actually <laughs> but current age um in other programming languages sometimes the type comes before this and that's why like you might see me make this mistake as i'm typing um there's one programming language called v and i believe v does this like uh you type the the type first it's weird it's c i think you see i see you do the same thing right yeah c you do the same thing um you you type your your uh type first so i would say string int whatever then the name of the variable in go it's name of the variable and the type of the variable um so yeah just if you see me making that mistake like often it's because i just there's too many of languages floating up uh, up here um so and then we will i'm just going to copy this right now because i don't feel like rewriting um i believe we need percent d and say age next year age okay sorry i know i wasn't talking much there but that is because i essentially was just rebuilding this exact same thing over here um oh and i need to do sorry my python is um interacting with me i need to do that so now when i run this and go oh haha <laughs> sorry my bad um Um, there we go. I believe that's what we needed. Yeah. Okay. So, um, right. What we did was, um, over here, you can do this in line, right? You can say, hey, current age plus one is going to be next year. Over here, you do it kind of on the outside. You say, hey, um, this is going to be a, a D for, I think it stands for digit. I'm not exactly sure because I'm pretty sure if you do percent %f that's a float. I don't know cuz like you would always you would think kind of that it would be an i, right, for percent for int or something. But d is what they use and d is for I, it, decimal maybe or digit, either one. I don't know um exactly. It's percent %d though if you want to use a whole number. If you wanted to use a float, you could do uh, that, but it's going to yell at me because I didn't pass it a float. I passed it an int. So, we will use d. Um, so either way, uh, you will be 33 next year. So Python, we run, you will be 33 next year. Go, we run, and you will be 33 next year. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and comment this one out so that we get the exact same output. Yep, so we get the exact same output in both. Um, so once again, now this is becoming a little more useful, right? So first we used our data in this say hello. We used data that we pass into it. Now we're actually manipulating our data, right? It's not a big manipulation of any sort. It's just adding one to it, but you can see how this starts building on. So, so you use data, you manipulate data, and then we're gonna do one last thing for this tutorial video because it's getting a little longer than I want. It's almost an hour long and we've only talked about legitimately variables and functions. Um, and there's a lot more to talk about. But like I said, what I'm trying to get here is two separate languages, and I'm trying to show you the things that you do with data to make programming useful. Unlike when you kind of just, at least when I was, this was my base issue when I was, when I was young, I would, um, and I was trying to learn programming, I would go through these tutorials, but I wouldn't get anything out of it, right? Like I would, I would be like, okay, sweet, I know Python syntax what do I do? Right? Because they didn't tell you what to do. They, you, like, you were just following it. And it's like, realize that you're making data, you're using data, you're manipulating data. And then our last one is going to be changing data, right? And this is, um, this builds into, it's very similar to manipulating, 
data, right? It's very similar to manipulating data, but it's essentially you're changing that data so that it can be used throughout the program differently, <laughs> right? You're, you're changing that data so that throughout the program, it's now updated and used differently. And that's why I wouldn't consider manipulating data and changing data the same thing. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and do um, def uh, changed name. And we will call name. And then we are going to say, we are going to return. And don't worry, we'll get into, I'll, I'll go through this and figure it out and show you what, what's happening. Um, or sorry, name, new name, return, new name. Actually, mm, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this, but yeah, we'll go ahead and do it this way for now. I think I think this will. I'm trying to make it the easiest way to read because I necessarily you could do this differently. Um, like you could just change it in place if you wanted to and all that, right? I know that. Um, I just, I'm trying to show you building blocks. Um, teach somebody, right? Like, what is it? Uh, give a man a fish. He's fed for a day. Teach a man how to fish and he's fed for a lifetime. Um, I'm teaching you these building blocks so that he, when you're done, you're not gonna have to keep coming back and watching more videos. You're gonna be able to go out and just build stuff um, because you realize what you're doing with it. So we're going to say, um, actually, so we're going to see something here. I, I, the, I was going to do it this way, um, but I don't think this is going to work right because of the way you get into, uh, stack frames and functions and everything. And actually I, I I'm not exactly sure how Python would deal with this. Right. So, um, Let's see. I actually want to see if this how this works. Um, if and I'll tell you why it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, that's what's good about this, right? So we're gonna say print um, or change name. Sorry, I didn't mean changed. I want to change name, and I'm gonna say name Bo. Um, Print. Actually, we'll use our um, say hello function to then do the name. And I just kind of want to see what this does because, yeah, okay. So it, it is actually it is actually doing uh, what I would expect it to. And the reason is uh, because of a stack frame, right? Um, and we, we can get into this later. Um, so, uh, Everything that's happening in here, right? When I when I pass uh, change name, right? When I change, when I even though I'm passing this, remember I'm passing a value to it, and, and this goes into what we learned earlier, is I'm passing a value into this. So actually, what's happening here, right, is name is actually equal to Sam, right? If you actually look at this, like if I replace this, right, and new name equals Bo, <laughs> this doesn't really make sense, right? Um, because I didn't pass the variable name into it even though it says i passed name remember i passed sam or jim actually is what it would have been um, because we we renamed it um, i passed jim into this and i set jim equals to bow and then i just returned from the function and then i decided hey i'm gonna say hello to it again and then for some reason i get jim still why well because this is what happened <laughs> this right here is what happened and it doesn't make logical sense at all <laughs> the, the it's funny, but these are little things that like people sometimes often go over and they're like, wow, well, I, I just wanted to change this. Why didn't it change this? Right. And it's because you're not passing the variable. You're not passing name in. you're passing Jim in. And then you're trying to set Jim equal to Bo. And then it's coming back and you're trying to print the name and it's still Jim. So how would you get around this? Well, you'd get around this by saying um, you could do name equals change name. Right. And then we do this, right? And what this is going to do is we're just going to this is going to be very uh, verbose code. 
for people that know. Okay, so, right. So now if I do this, right, you'll see that, hello, Bo, how was your day, right? And, and this is because now we're saying, hey, change name, I'm going to give you a name, and then essentially all we're doing is just returning the name. So essentially this is the exact same thing as just saying name equals Bo. Um, but it, it's, I'm trying to show you how you would uh, change the data, right? Like essentially in another language, you could actually pass a pointer to the variable you could actually pass like the actual variable, not just the value of the variable. And then you could say, hey, take this pointer, update it and return me that pointer back into it. And um, when you return, because you changed the location in memory, not just the, um, because I actually gave you the location in memory where that lives, I changed it in memory. So when I read that variable again from memory, I am now getting a new value off of it. Um, so we can do, um, we need to write the same thing in Go because that's the part of this tutorial. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I need to tell it it is a string. And then I'm just going to return new name. Yeah. Okay, so essentially this is the exact same code um, in, in Go. And what you're learning here is that in Python, because the interpreter is nice, and um, it it automatically knows, hey, it sees that it's going to return a string, or it's going to return new name, and this could, could actually be like an age too, right? Essentially, I could, I, <laughs> that's what makes Python, you might not know what you're getting in Python, and that's why like when you write like low level language and things that actually really, really, really matter, that this right here causes more confusion than help. Um, and it's be it causes more confusion because I could do age equals um, change name uh, 50, right? And then I could uh, age next year, um, age, right? And let me show you, like, th and this is, this is why you don't use the same programming language for every task you wanna do because some make more sense to use and some don't make more sense to use, right? And now when I run Python, you'll see that I'm gonna be 51 next year, even though I ran change name on a integer and not a, a string. Um, and that's because I didn't tell it what it was gonna do. Now Python has fixed this um, in recent ones. It's called type Python that you could do. And you can essentially like do something like, uh, like that or, yeah, I believe you could, you can essentially, uh, essentially do this I think and um, don't worry I'm gonna erase all this because this doesn't really matter to you guys I'm just showing you that there is a way around this um, types oh that's right sorry I'm stupid it's been a while actually I don't think any types essentially though I can run this and now it will it will still do it <laughs> Right, but this was to more tell people that are reading the code. That's what's funny, right? It, it'll still do it. Um, these are actually just ignored from what it looks like, but it's more for um, reading. Somebody who's reading this code says, "Oh, this takes in a string and it's going to return a string," and they know that now that they, they write the code. But as you can see, Python doesn't give a crap, and Python's like, "Sweet, I don't care that you did that. Um, I'm still going to to do that." Um, and yeah, it's just. Like this is why this is confusing even now, right? Like when you're starting programming, that's actually easier. You're like, oh, I can pass whatever I wanted to and I get whatever back, sweet, you know, like, and it's like, it's actually more confusing as you get uh, into programming longer. So um, once again, sorry, digressed on that, but I thought it was valid that I would show you that um, Python will do that and it shouldn't do that. It should, it, I would want my program to tell me, hey, you're using this incorrectly. Right, I, I would want it to do that. So now we go into um, uh, func. Oh, I already wrote the function for change name. Sweet string string uh, change name equals bow and name equals change name. And now when I do
Hello, Bo. How was your day? Right. So, oh, that was Python. Sorry. Hello, Bo. How was your day? Um, so this is, like I said, this is going to be the one I'm, I'm going to stop this definitely because we've gone a little over an hour, but I, I feel like, um, I'm hoping that you will get more out of this type of a tutorial than you would if you were watching some learn this quick in five minutes, because I, I'm hoping that I gave you guys a background on why things happen, um, what you want to, like what you want to do, but you, I showed you why this is happening underneath, right? Like, like why, why does this happen? Yeah, this is cool that it will do that, but oh, why is this different than what I would do if I swapped over and I learned Go, right? Um, but so in Go, oh, once again, I don't think I talked about this. Um, if I did, it, essentially what I was doing over here where I did name str and then um, little arrow returns str. Essentially this, when you do um, in Go, you do, this is what's coming in, right? We know that from up here. Um, we're gonna call it new name and we're gonna return a string. That's essentially, you're telling the compiler, hey, this function is going to actually return something. It's not going to be a void function or a nil function or a null function, depending on however you want to call it in other languages. It is a going to return something. And you can see that if I don't have that there, we now get red because it's, it'll say, it'll even say, it'll say like, um, no result values expected, meaning you, did you didn't tell me you're going to return anything. So why are you returning something? Right. Um, I didn't want that. Uh, there we go. So we're going to put that back and that's going to run. So, a uh, little overview. What did we go over today? We went over variables. We went over functions actually, and we didn't just go over um, just you know help like same simple fun functions that just do one single thing. We went over um, different types of functions that uh, do different things to your data, both manipulate your data inside the function and both return uh, a value from the functions. Um, so, like I said, if this helped you good um, if not i know it was long-winded but i feel like like i said like programming is not necessarily easy um and if you're trying to really learn it uh, you want to know these little things that are happening in the background and if you want to get into security then i highly recommend this because um like i said these little things that i pointed out are the reason why bugs exist in certain programs but um yeah uh, hope you enjoyed like i said if you liked it I would prefer that you at least just comment and say you liked it if you don't want to like or subscribe. If you do want to like and subscribe, cool. Uh, I'd still like a comment just to see if it helped you. But yeah, uh, have a nice day.